I was born into a Christian family and since I was young, I went to church services with my parents. I still keep my faith in the Lord when I got older and began to read the Bible every day and go to church every Sunday. I didn't know why, but as time went on, I began to feel an emptiness in my heart. I didn't know what to say to the Lord when I prayed, and I wasn't feeling enlightened when I read the Bible. I felt very far from the Lord and this caused me pain. When I told my father about it, he just said that I needed to have faith in the Lord. Later, I often look for pastors and sermons to listen to and watch a lot of movies that were supposed to inspire faith. I also did my best to stop doing things that didn't accord with the Lord's requirements. But my heart still felt empty. One day, my husband and I watch a Christian movie on YouTube. As the movie start, the main character was writing down his own experiences, and he said, 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus promised his followers, Behold, I come quickly. This line from the Bible drew us in immediately. The prophecies and revelation were all mysteries. And here the main character was talking about this prophecy. What would he say next? We keep watching with growing curiosity. The main character in the movie is arrested and prosecuted by the CCP for believing in God. While in prison, he meets Brother Zhao who believes in Almighty God. And this brother finds a chance to slip him a piece of paper. On it is written, Do not be discouraged, do not be weak, and I will make things clear for you. The road to the kingdom is not so smooth. Nothing is that simple. You want blessings to come to you easily, do you not? Today, everyone will have bitter trials to face. Without such trials, the loving heart you have for me will not grow stronger and you will not have true love for me. Even if these trials consist merely of minor circumstances, everyone must pass through them. It's just that the difficulty of the trials will vary from one person to another. Those who share in my bitterness will certainly share in my sweetness. That is my promise and my blessing to you. During these last days, you must bear testimony to God. No matter how great your suffering, you should walk until the very end. And even at your last breath, still you must be faithful to God and at the mercy of God. Only this is truly loving God, and only this is the strong and resounding testimony. The main character is so moved after he reads these two passages. He is greatly comforted and he finds his faith and strength. My husband and I were astonished by these two passages too. They were just so authoritative, so powerful, and so moving. It was as though God was speaking directly to us, telling us what we should do. Though I'd seen how hard the path of believing in God could be, I didn't know why, but I felt a sense of delight arise deep within me, and hearing these words gave me faith and strength. I couldn't help but think, where on earth did these words come from? Could they be God's words? Could the Lord really have returned? But 
when the Lord comes, He should come on a cloud. And we haven't yet seen any sign of Him coming on a cloud. Although I felt a little confused, I really enjoyed these words. And excitedly, I turned to my husband and said, These words are great. I've never read words with such power before. I then paused the movie, found a notebook, and copied these words down. As I wrote, I read them over again. Do not be discouraged. Do not be weak. And I will make things clear for you. The road to the kingdom is not as smooth. Nothing is that simple. I looked at my husband and said, The road to the kingdom? I thought only God could know what the road to the kingdom is. These words are not talking about the road to the kingdom, and they could not have been spoken by just any ordinary person. This is a matter only God could talk about. I keep on reading. Today, everyone will have bitter trials to face. Without such trials, the loving heart you have for me will not grow stronger and you will not have true love for me. Even if these trials consist merely of minor circumstances, everyone must pass through them. It's just that the difficulty of the trials will vary from one person to another. Those who share in my bitterness will certainly share in my sweetness. That is my promise and my blessing to you. The tone of these words gave me a sense that they'd been spoken by someone who had mastery over all things, who was confiding in us and telling us directly and sincerely that the road to the kingdom is not a smooth one. Each and every person must experience it different amounts of pain and hardship but this is so that our true faith in God and true love for God grow this is God's love and blessing for men I suddenly saw the light I'd always believed before that having faith in God means that everything had to go well and smoothly in life and that this was God's blessing. I believe that if we meet with disaster or calamity like the unbelievers did, then that was a bad thing. And I even believe God was punishing us. Years ago, I lost everything I owned in an earthquake. Back then, I believed that God had not watched over me or protected me and this upset me a lot as I languished in my misconception about God. Now reading these words from the movie, my attitude towards such difficult situation had changed and the misconceptions I would carried for years about God were set aside at last. I also came to understand that I had to obey, pray to God, and seek to understand God's deeds when hardship and suffering came my way, and that by doing this, I would not become weak and negative. Thank the Lord, I finally found the path of establishing true faith in God. I carried on thinking about the words. Those who share in my bitterness will certainly share in my sweetness. That is my promise and my blessing to you. The words will certainly promise and blessing revealed the speaker's authority and power. He has things of us, but he also makes us promises. More than that, he has the power to fulfill these promises. These words shock my heart. 
and I could not help but wonder how the tone of these words could be so similar to the tone the Lord Jesus used. Like when the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Truly I say to you, except ye be converted and become as a little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. These words also contain the Lord's requirements and promises, and they embody the identity and status of God. When we hear them, we feel the authority and power of God's words, and reverence for God arises in our hearts. When we saw that the words in this movie were just like this, my husband and I both felt they didn't seem as though they'd been spoken by an ordinary human being, but that they seem like the voice of God. These words weren't from the Bible, however. So where on earth had they come from? Confused but excited, we continued watching the movie. What surprised us was that later in the movie, Brother Zhao told the main character while they were working that the Lord Jesus had returned and that he had become flesh and come in secret to perform the work of judging and cleansing man in the last days. My husband and I were baffled by this at first. As we'd always believed that the Lord Jesus would one day return on a cloud. But Brother Zhao in the movie said, We are only waiting for the Lord's return based on the prophecies of His descent upon a cloud. But we have overlooked other prophecies about the Lord's return. This is a grave mistake. Many parts of the Bible contain prophecies about the Lord's return. For example, the Lord's prophecies, Behold, I come as a thief. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. There is also revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I will sup with him and he with me. In chapter 17 of Luke, For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. These prophecies mention the Lord's returning as a thief and the coming of the Son of Man. They mention that he speaks to people while knocking at the door and so on. Doesn't this show that when it comes to the Lord's return beside his public descent upon a cloud, he also will descend in secret ways. If we believe the Lord will only come by descending upon a cloud, then how could the prophecies of Him coming in secret be fulfilled? There are many prophecies in the Bible about the Lord's return in the last days. If we cast aside the other prophecies, but just delimit the way the Lord will return based on one or two parts of the Bible as Him descending on a white cloud. Isn't it that a little arbitrary? That way, we would be likely to miss the chance to welcome His return and likely to be rejected by Him. At this, 
we took out our Bible and checked these verses word by word. As we did so, I thought, these verses really do say that the Lord will also come in secret. So it looks as though the Lord coming with clouds is not the only way in which He returns. This has really opened my eyes. Rather Zhao went on with his fellowship, saying, The Bible prophesied that the Lord will come as a thief, and, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation. The appearance and work of Almighty God have fulfilled these prophecies. From the outside, he looks just like a regular person. He speaks from within normal humanity. Who could imagine that he is the appearance of the Lord? This does fulfill the prophecy of the Lord's return as a thief. If therefore, you shall not watch, I will come on you as a thief. This prophecy refers to Almighty God's appearance and work suddenly spreading to every denomination, just like a thief. No one could have realized it. Those who spread the gospel bear witness to His words to all those who seek God's appearance and they patiently fellowship on Almighty God's words, this is the Lord knocking at the door. Since Almighty God's appearance and work, He has been continually subjected to the brutal hunts and persecution of the Chinese government, and He has suffered the mad resistance, condemnation, and rejection of the religious world. There have even been many evil spirits and demons who have openly attacked, condemned, and blasphemed Almighty God online. This completely fulfills this prophecy spoken by the Lord. But first must He suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. If the Lord had descended publicly on a cloud like people imagine, then the tares, the goats, the evil servants, and the Antichrist would definitely fall down in worship to accept Almighty God. How would they be exposed then? I'm afraid that even the CCP, demons, and all the unbelievers would also accept Almighty God. Then how would God's work in the last days be carried out? So only if God is incarnated as the Son of Man to appear and work can these prophecies spoken by the Lord Jesus, including those of the Lord's work after His return in the last days, be fulfilled, be completed. Brother Zhao went on saying, Without accepting the work of Almighty God in the last days, we would not understand these prophecies. Almighty God has come and expressed all truths that purify and save mankind, and He is doing the work of judgment in the last days. His sheep listen to His voice, and wise virgins from every denomination hear the words Almighty God has expressed and know them to be the truth, to be God's voice, and they have all turned toward Almighty God. This is the rapture. These people have been raptured up in front of God's throne and undergo judgment and chastisement before Christ's judgment seat. 
they are first to be purified, made into overcomers by God, and become the first fruits. This fulfills this prophecy from Revelation. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. After God descends in secret and makes this group of overcomers, His great work will be complete. After that, He will descend on a cloud and openly appear to all nations, to all peoples. That will fulfill the prophecy in Revelation. Behold, He comes with clouds, and every eye shall see Him, and they also which burst Him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of Him. This will be the sin of the Lord openly descending on a cloud, and all eyes will be able to see Him. Even those who resisted and condemned Almighty God will be able to see Him descending on a cloud, which is why all kindreds of the earth shall well because of Him. God works in stages and to plan. The prophecies of the Lord's return have now been largely fulfilled. So all that is left is for the prophecy of the Lord's coming openly with clouds to be fulfilled after the disasters. Brother Zhao's fellowship was reasonable and based on facts. And I know in my heart that the Lord has indeed come, that He has become flesh and come among us in secret. My husband and I realized how foolish we'd been to have always clung to the idea of the Lord coming with clouds. But at the same time, we felt so fortunate to have heard the great news of the Lord's coming in secret. It was no wonder we'd feel these words to be so authoritative and powerful, as though they were God's voice. As it's torn out, they were indeed words spoken by God Himself. Filled with excitement, we keep on watching the movie and we heard Almighty God's words saying, Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. That will be the time of the end of God's management plan, and it will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs, when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment, for they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. 
and so it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus? The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth. But for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person, but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. As I read these words appearing on the screen, I wondered, does so-called saint mean those who don't accept God's work when He comes in secret, but who just wait for the Lord Jesus to come on the cloud? All these years, almost the whole religious world has been waiting for the Lord to come with clouds. But these words clearly state that if we blindly cling to the idea of the Lord coming with clouds and refuse to accept the fact that God has already come among us in secret, then we will end up being punished by God. As by that time, God's last day's work of judging and cleansing man will be over. The tone of these words is stern, and it makes us feel afraid. But at the same time, we feel we are being given a reminder by these words, and giving advice and encouragement in the hope that we might become people who seek and accept the truth, and not blindly delimit God's work and deny the fact of His return. We feel God's disposition that brooks no offense in these words, and that they are filled with authority and power. Besides God, who else could unravel the biblical mysteries of the Lord's coming? Who else could determine man's end? Only God can do these things. My husband and I watched this movie several times over. Almighty God's words shock us to our course and the mysteries of the Lord's return were all revealed. We knew that no human being could have said these words. We never dared to believe that the Lord had returned already. When, but in actual fact, the Lord really had returned. And we felt so fortunate and overjoyed in our surprise. We never dared believe that we'd be able to welcome the Lord's return in our lifetimes. Our feeling of excitement lasted for days. One day, I called my husband on my way to work. And the more we talked about it, the more we felt that these words must be God's words. Excitedly, he said to me, I just have to get my hands on this book. We were so eager to find out what to do next and how we could welcome the Lord. So when I got back from work that day, my husband and I searched online for the Church of Almighty God and found the church's official website. Once on the official website, we saw the book, The Word Appears in the Flesh, and got very excited. First, we read in the preface, Almighty God saying, Belief in God means believing that there is a God. This is the simplest concept as regards believing in God. What's more, 
Believing that there is a God is not the same as truly believing in God. Rather, it is a kind of simple faith with strong religious overtones. True faith in God means the following. On the basis of the belief that God holds sovereignty over all things, one experiences His words and His work. Borges's one's corrupt disposition satisfies the will of God and comes to know God. Only a journey of this kind may be called faith in God. Yet people often see belief in God as a simple and frivolous matter. People who believe in God in this way have lost what it means to believe in God. And though they may continue to believe until the very end, they shall never gain God's approval because they tread upon the wrong path. I signed inwardly at how great these words were and I knew they were the truth. To us, these words were earth-shaking and they completely change our previous concepts about faith in God. Before, we knew only that we had to read the Bible a lot, pray a lot, and listen to sermons a lot. And it could be said that we believe in God only to be blessed and grace. We had no idea that True faith in God means to experience God's words and work on the foundation of the belief that God holds sovereignty over all things. These words explain the true meaning of faith in God so profoundly and meticulously, giving such a clear way forward. I became even more convinced that these words had come from God and were God's voice. Only God could reveal the truth and the true meaning of faith in God so clearly. We read on. God and man cannot be spoken of on equal terms. His essence and his work are most unfathomable and incomprehensible to man. If God does not personally do His work and speak His words in the world of man, then man would never be able to understand the will of God. And so, even those who have devoted their entire lives to God would not be able to receive His approval. If God does not set to work, then however will man does, it will all be for naught because God's thoughts will always be higher than the thoughts of man, and God's wisdom is beyond man's comprehension. And so I say that those who claim to fully understand God and His work are an inept lot. They are all overweening and ignorant. Man should not define the work of God. Moreover, Man cannot define the work of God. Since we believe that there is a God, and since we wish to satisfy Him and to see Him, we should seek the way of truth and should look for a way to be compatible with God. We should not stand in stiff neck opposition to Him. What good could possibly come of such actions? After reading this passage, I realize that we are all just individual human beings, forever insignificant. God, on the other hand, will forever be God. His words and work contain so many mysteries that we cannot fathom. And, and toward God's work, we should adopt a humble and seeking attitude. We cannot arbitrarily jump to conclusions. This passage 
give us a path or practice for seeking and investigating the true way. I didn't read more of God's words that said, You may have opened this book for the purpose of research or with the intention of accepting. Whatever your attitude, I hope that you will read it to the end and will not put it aside easily. Reading this, I felt just how sincere these words were, as though God were speaking directly to us, leading us on to seek God's words and work. I decided to keep reading this book and to get in touch with the Church of Almighty God. We sent a message using the chat function on the Church of Almighty God website and the brothers and sisters from the church got back to us. After that, we often read God's words with the brothers and sisters online, with each of us sharing our experiences and understanding. As we read more and more of Almighty God's words, we came to know many truths, such as how God performs the work of judgment in the last days. The difference between being saved and attaining full salvation. What being raptured means. What kind of person can enter the kingdom of heaven and the mystery of the incarnation. In particular, Almighty God says, When Jesus came into the world of man, he ushered in the age of grace and ended the age of law. During the last days, God once more became flesh, and with this incarnation, He ended the age of grace and ushered in the age of kingdom. All those who are able to accept the second incarnation of God will be led into the age of kingdom and will moreover become able to personally accept the guidance of God. Though Jesus did much work among men, He only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition, fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man but it also required God to do even greater work to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. And so, now that man has been forgiven of his sins, God has returned to the flesh to lead man into the new age and began the work of chastisement and judgment. This work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and they shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. From the work of Jehovah to that of Jesus, and from the work of Jesus to that of this current stage, these three stages cover in a continuous thread the entire gamut of God's management, and they are all the work of one spirit. Since the creation of the world, God has always been at work managing mankind. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last, and He is the one who begins an age and the one who brings the age to an end. The three stages of work in different ages and different locations are unmistakably the work of one spirit. All those who separate these three stages stand in opposition to God. 
After reading Almighty God's words, I came to understand that the Lord Jesus only performed the work of redeeming mankind and not the work of judging and cleansing man in the last days and saving man once and for all. Although our faith in the Lord means that our sins are forgiven, our sinful nature is not expunged and that is why we are still capable of sinning all the time and then confessing and are unable to break free of the feathers of sin. Upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, in the last days, Almighty God expressed the truth and performs the work of judgment to cleanse and save man once and for all. Almighty God and the Lord Jesus are one God who takes different names and performs different work in different ages. Only by experiencing God's work of judgment in the last days can our corrupt disposition be cleansed and can we be fit to enter God's kingdom. This information is crucial for us to know. Almighty God's words reveal to us these truths and mysteries concerning God's work, and we were soon moved. Truly, these are the words of God. Besides God, no one else could end the old age and launch a new one. What's more, Almighty God's words reveal many truths related to practice, such as the principles of living out normal humanity, the principles of treating people fairly, and more. Almighty God's words truly are such a world of truths. Thus, entirely fulfilling the Lord Jesus' words, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We became totally convinced that Almighty God is indeed the Lord Jesus' return, and that Almighty God's words are the expressions of God. The scroll that is open as prophesied in Revelation by Reading Almighty God's words, we came to understand many truths we never understood before. And by praying to Almighty God and reading His words, the problems we encountered in our daily lives were all resolved. We truly began to live a life face to face with God and we felt so fulfilled deep down in our spirits. I also came to appreciate how important it is to hear God's voice when it comes to welcoming the Lord. And I thank God for leading us every step of the way to hear His voice and welcome the return of the Lord.